Cyberspace, my name is Garrett Mills and welcome to a bit of a different video. Uh, this video is not going to be part of a coding series or any of my tutorial series. Um, today I want to take a look at setting up port forwarding or a system like port forwarding if you your ISP doesn't allow it. So there are many um, ISPs, most consumer ISPs don't allow you to port forward. And if you don't know what port forwarding is, it basically means that if you have a server inside your network that you want to be accessible from the internet, so outside connections coming into your home network, um, it allows that server to connect to a port on your public address and so that any request to that server via the public gets sent to that server on the internal network. Because they want to maintain some level of tier system between their uh, commercial and consumer grade access connections, most ISPs for residential connections block port 80, uh, port 443, any of the mail uh, server ports um, that you would otherwise need to host an email server or your website via a public IP address, or maybe you don't have a static public IP address for your internet connection, or maybe your ISP uses a WAN between your connection and the internet. So that's what happened to me. So my ISP uses a WAN between the uplink to my house and their uplink to the internet. So I can't actually port forward to get to the internet, which means that I can't host um, you know, my website on my own server. And this was something I've been trying to work around. I've been doing some research and I think I have it all planned out how I'm going to sort of get around that, but in this video we're going to take a look at how to get a public server from inside your network and make it accessible from the internet from like a domain name without using port forwarding. So we're going to start out with a VPS and that VPS is going to be publicly accessible. Then we're going to set up a virtual private network by hosting a VPN on our public server that we're going to purchase the cheap little five dollar a month VPS we're going to host a Tink VPN on that public server and then we're going to connect our server at home and that's on our LAN to that VPS and so because the server at home can make outbound connections it can connect to that VPN, VPN virtual private network hosted on our server and the two can communicate as though they were on the same network. And so what that means is we can set up a proxy server, a reverse proxy server, so that when you type in um, test.glmdev.tech or whatever domain name that's pointed at your virtual private server, you can have your private virtual private server forward that connection to the um, server on your home network. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us to take advantage of a cheap, fast, um, virtual private server and then give it the pro raw processing power of much more expensive bare metal hardware that we can set up at home. And so we can set up much more powerful processing, which much more storage, much more RAM, and we don't have to pay exorbitant amounts for it because all our virtual private server is, is it's basically a gateway between the internet and our server at home. So we're going to take a look at how to set that up now and we'll just walk through all of that. All right, so the first thing we need to do to set up our system for allowing our server to be accessed from the internet is we need the computer instance that is actually publicly accessible on the internet. So that's our VPS that we talked about. So this VPS is going to be what gives us a public IP address to work with. So, um, I did some hunting around and the best value for the least amount of money virtual private server I found is on vulture.com, I think I'm saying that right, v-u-l-t-r.com. And they've got their cheapest VPS is $5 a month and it's got something like 10,000 or 1,000 gigs of bandwidth a month, which for a small home server, maybe a smaller scale website, that's plenty of uh, incoming bandwidth to the server. And so there is a link in the video description to vulture.com and I've used vulture before. It's a fantastic experience. Everything works just like expected. The interface 
um, is great. You get root access. A public IP address is static. You can assign a domain name to it. It all just works like you would expect it to. So once you get your account set up and you click add a new VM, you're going to get a page that looks something like this. Um, the location is not really a big deal. If you want it to be fast for you, I would pick one that's closer to where you are. So Dallas is closest to where I am. Um, on the server type, so for this server, because we're only running a Tink VPN, our virtual network, and a small proxy server, we're going to use a distribution of Linux. Now that might scare some people off, but we'll walk through it. It's not hard at all. Um, it looks a little daunting because it's a command line, but it's not hard at all. Plus, Linux is free and fast and it provides a very quick medium for our connections to go through. So we want to work in Ubuntu and we want 16.04 and make sure it's a 64-bit OS. And then down here on server size, I'm going to change it to $5 a month since I we really don't need that much memory, that much bandwidth, or that much processing power, or that much storage for a server that all it's going to do is forward connections on. And then down here, um, you can enable additional features if it's something you're concerned about. So IP version 6, auto backups, um, DDoS, uh, startup script, SH, SSH keys. Uh, we don't really need to worry about those too much. And then our server host name and label. So test.glmdev.tech. It's going to automatically put that in as the server label. And we're going to hit deploy now. So once the server is deployed, it's going to take a couple minutes max to set up the um, operating system, the Ubuntu operating system on it. And it's going to set a randomized default password and um, it's going to get it all booted up and ready to work with. So once uh, Vulture finishes setting up and installing Ubuntu on our virtual machine, our virtual private server, we can go to the server information page and there's a few important things that we want to note down here. So if we look right over here, we see this line that says IP address. This is our public internet IP address. So this is the IP address that if you typed in 45.32.193.236 in a web browser, you could access our virtual private server from that address. So that's important to note down because we're going to be using it later on to set up our domain name. So I'm just going to jot that down on just a scrap of paper. And then the other thing that we want to uh, take note of is right here where it says passwords. So by default when you sign in to um, Ubuntu through Vulture, you log in as the root user which gives you complete control of the system. Obviously, it's more dangerous, you can mess stuff up, but as long as we're being careful, it's more powerful. And so you need the password for that. So to see the randomly set password that it assigns it, you can click this show password button and it will show your password and you'll just wanna jot that down. So once you've jotted that down, uh, we can go ahead and access our virtual private server and start getting it set up. So. To access the virtual private server, there are a couple of options, but the easiest way is to just click this little button up here that says View Console. This will give you a uh, virtual connection to what is effectively the computer screen of the computer that you're working on. So this is where we will enter all our commands and everything to access um, our virtual private server, our internet accessible server. So to log into it, we're going to log in as the user root, and then we're going to type in that password that you just jotted down. So once we get logged in, there are a couple things we need to do right off the bat since it's just installed Ubuntu and it um, is just a brand new machine, a brand new server. Uh, we want to go ahead and update all of the packages and have the server restart just to make sure that we're working with a clean slate. So we're going to do apt update then a semicolon apt upgrade followed by a dash then the letter Y then a semicolon and then reboot so what this is going to do is it's going to update the list of all the software um, that it has access to then it's going to go ahead and download all of the updates and it's going to install them so 
So it's currently finished installing all the updates and it's rebooting back into our operating system that we can access. And so now we just need to log in again. And once we're logged in, we're ready to actually get started setting up our virtual private network um, so that we can connect it to our server at home. Okay, so now that we've got our virtual private server up and running, we need to go ahead and set up the um, VPN, virtual private network, um, server on here. So what this will allow us to do is it will allow our server at home to join the virtual private network that's hosted by our public server. And so then the two computers can talk to each other as if they were on the same network. So we're going to use a utility called Tink for this, and that's T-I-N-C, and it's just a very common um, open source uh, VPN server and client that I've found works extremely well. Plus, it's optimized for UDP connections, which frees up some of the TCP bandwidth space for other things like website hosting. So it just improves efficiency just a little bit. So we need to install Tink on our um, virtual private server. So we can do this by typing apt install tink y and it's going to go and pull down tink and get it set up. So once that's done um, we can go ahead and set up the configuration for it. So tink works on a platform of host names with configurations and predefined IP addresses. So on every client in your network they have a defined name so the server or VPS or whatever joined to a defined network name in our case we're going to use just whatever we want so test net and a defined IP address that is specific to that um, that client so that they can all talk to each other and they all know who to look for so all of this is kept within the slash etc slash tink folder and so you make folders for each network and then you put each computer's connection keys in their respective files. To do start setting this up we need to create our network folder. So to do this we're going to use the command mkdir which just creates a folder. We're going to use the modifier hyphen slash p which means it's going to create all the folders necessary to get to that folder and then it's the directory slash forward slash etc forward slash tink forward slash whatever the name of your network is in our case testnet slash hosts so that hosts folder is a subfolder of the testnet folder which we'll be working in so we're going to cd change directories into slash etsy tink testnet so now our command prompt is inside the testnet folder. So the first thing that we need to do is create the network configuration file. So our VPS is going to be the server side of our network and it's going to actually be what serves the network connections. So it needs the um, network connection configuration file that tells it what sort of network, what kind of name to set up go ahead and get started by creating the tink configuration file and so we are going to use the program nano nano is a text line based file editor it's very useful it comes pre-installed on basically every operating system nowadays so nano and then the name of the file tinc.conf and so then we hit enter and we're dropped in so this is think of it like notepad on windows or gedit on ubuntu it's just a simple text editor. So now we need to add some lines of configuration. So capital N name space equal sign and then the name of this client. So I'm just going to use VPS for simplicity. So we're going to call this client the VPS. Now a couple important things to note. Your client names must be alphanumerical which means they can't contain dots, hyphens, slashes, anything besides letters and numbers nothing else it'll mess it up and your network won't be able to initialize the next thing is the address family so a d d r e s s capital f family space equals then ipv4 because we want our network to be founded on ip version 4 that's the kind of ip that most computers run these days the next thing is interface 
This is the name of the virtual network interface. So the network interface on our VPS that is going to be connected to the private network that the home server and the public server can talk to each other over. So it's going to be the name of that and we're just going to call it TUN0 just because it's sort of consistent and when you see TUN0 in the list that way you'll know it is the virtual network. So this is all that we need to add in this file. So we're going to hold control and we're going to press O and then enter to save the file and control X to exit. And the next thing we need to do is create the host configuration file. So now that we've got the specific configuration file that runs on this machine, we need to create a host configuration file that is um, specific to this machine, but that can be distributed to all the other machines on the network on our virtual private network. So the way Tink secures the network so that just nobody can connect to it besides the computers that are intended is it uses SSH keys and it uses custom configuration files. So if you want two computers to be able to connect to each other using Tink, they both have to have each other's um, specific encryption key. Otherwise, they can't uh, connect to each other and that makes Tink a very secure very safe um, platform to be using. So we need to create the configuration file for the VPS. So we need to use nano again because we're going to be editing a file and we're going to be creating the file etc tink testnet or the name of your network hosts and then the name of whatever you call this. So I called it VPS in the tink dot c o n f file if you called it something else you would type that in here we're going to hit enter to edit the file now in this file we need a couple of things we need the publicly accessible address of our server so this would be the address that all the other clients look at to try and connect to this network and then the subnet ip address so what the it'll be the ip uh, that is assigned to this server in our private network that the two can talk to each other over so the first thing the public address, so this is where computers will look to connect. This will be the public address of your VPS, so that IP address that you jotted down earlier, that'll go there. And then the subnet address, this is the address that is assigned to this machine on our private network. So we want it to be 10.0.0.1 or any other private domain space so and then the last thing we need is the subnet so forward slash 32 that's just a networking thing uh, so we're gonna hit control O to save and then control X to close and so there is our configuration file that is specific to this host and then the last thing that we're gonna need for this host um, as far as configuration goes is we're going to need to generate that encryption key so that special code that um, only this computer has so that only computers with this code can connect to each other that way our network is secured so we need to use the tink program t-i-n-c-d to generate the keys so that we're going to use the dash in and then we're going to specify the name of the network so test net and then we're going to have a dash capital K 4096 and then we're going to press enter and then it's going to ask us for the name of the file. Just press enter to keep the defaults. And if you don't see any errors, then you're good. And you have the encryption keys for this host generated. So the next couple of things we need to do is we need to create the scripts that the Tink software is going to run to actually connect this server to our private network first thing we need to do is create the script it runs when it turns on the network. So we're going to go nano again, etc, tink, testnet, or the name of your network, then tinc up. It's very important that you use specifically the file name tinc hyphen up, because otherwise it won't know what file to run. So we hit enter. Then we need the first line needs to be a pound sign, exclamation point, slash, bin slash sh that tells the operating system 
what software to run this with, so our shell software. Then we need to run a couple of commands. So if config dollar sign capital word interface then whatever IP address you assign to this, so 10.0.0.1 is what I assign to it, and then netmask. In most cases, your netmask is going to be 255, 255, 255, 0. So once we've got that config, this is going to be the file, the command that it runs when it turns on our private network. So then we're going to hold Control O to save, Control X to close the file. So now we need to create the script that it's going to run to shut down the network. So we're going to need nano, etsy, tink, the name of our network, and then tinc down. Hit enter, and then the command is ifconfig, dollar sign, capital interface and then down so that will turn off the virtual network interface for this computer control O to write control X to exit and then the very last thing we need to do to um, have our network set up for this computer this virtual private server is we need to make it so that we can actually run those tink dash up and tink dash down files so we can do that using chmod 755 and slash etsy slash tink slash name of the network so test net slash tink and then hyphen and then an asterisk so that it knows to do this to any file that begins with tink slash hyphen then press enter and that is this node of the network this part of the network is set up and ready to go so the next thing that we're going to need to do is hop over to the server at our house or your private network or whatever so that we can set that up. Okay, so the next part of our setup needs to be done on whatever server you're using at your house. So this is going to be the server that actually runs the website, runs the mail server or whatever. So I'm going to show how to set it up in a Linux-based server, so Ubuntu. And if you don't currently know what software you're going to use, I recommend Ubuntu or some Linux distro. It's cheaper, it's generally more lightweight, and it's very well suited for mail servers, web servers, sort of web application-based uh, platforms. So the first thing we want to do is we want to log into it, obviously, and open up a terminal. And then there's some commands we need to run. So most of this is going to need to be run as root. So as long as you're being careful, uh, we're going to switch over to the root account by typing in sudo space su and then typing in our password. So now we can run root commands without having to type in our password a bunch. So the first thing we need to do is install tink on this client. So apt install tink and then dash y and it's going to pull down tink and install it so once it's finished installing tink the next thing we need to do is set up a similar structure to the structure we set up on our server just a minute ago we need to set up the network folder in slash etc slash tink and then we need to set up the config file so we're going to need to create the directory of course so mkdir dash p slash etc slash tink and then the same name of the network so test net slash hosts and then we can change directories into slash etsy tink testnet to switch to that folder and we're ready to get started so we need to create the configuration file again so that it knows the settings of the network so we're going to do that with nano and then tink.conf conf and now we need to do a very similar thing to what we did last time so we need to set the name <coughs> so we need to set the name of this computer so the last computer was named VPS. Again, this has to be alphanumeric, so just letters and numbers. And it should be pretty um, self-explanatory, so like server, I'll call this. And then the address family. That should be the same. And then the interface. And then this is the part that 
only goes on the clients connecting to our private network is the name of the computer that you want it to connect to. So what computer is running the actual Tink server? Well, that is the client named VPS. So that's whatever um, client you named VPS. So it's whatever you named your server when we were setting this up on the uh, VPS side, the public side. So then we're going to press Control O to write and Control X to close. And the next thing we need to do is create the configuration file that's specific to our private server. So to do this, we're going to edit the file slash etc slash tink slash um, testnet slash hosts slash then whatever you named this. So I named it server. Now in here we just need to set the IP address of that we want this server to have in our private network since it won't actually be hosting the network directly. So we're going to set this to something that uses the same scheme but just a different IP address. So we call the, the public server 10.0.0.1 so we're going to call this one 10.0.0.2 and then slash 32 for the networking mask. Press Control O to write and Control X to close it. And then we need to generate the encryption keys for this machine. And we can do that by running the same command, tink d slash n testnet, or the name of your network, then hyphen capital K 4096, press enter. It's going to ask you for the names, just press enter to use the default ones, and there we go. So now we need to create the tink-up and tink-down files so that this um, server knows what network stuff to connect to uh, when it starts the network. So we're going to um, create the file etc slash tink slash testnet slash tink dash up. And again, we want it to be run by the bin sh file. And then it's going to have a similar command to the one we set up on the public side. So ifconfig dollar sign capital interface and then the IP address that we set for this one, so 10.0.0.2, and then the same net mask. Press Control O to write it and Control X to close. And then we need to create a tink down file. So nano etc tink name of your network tink down. So this is going to be looking awfully familiar by now ifconfig interface down. Control O to save, Control X to close. And then obviously, just like we did on the public side, we need to make it so that Tink can actually run those files using chmod 755 slash etc slash Tink slash the name of the network slash Tink hyphen and then an asterisk so that it does it for both of them. And there we go. We have the Tink folder and configuration files set up on our server at our house on the private side. So if you remember um, earlier on in the video, I talked a little bit about how Tink authenticates and makes sure that only the clients that have been allowed to connect to the network are connecting the network. And it does that by generating random encryption keys, 4096-bit encryption keys, for all the clients on the network. And all of those encryption keys have to be on all the other clients. Otherwise, it won't work. It won't allow them to connect to the network. So that means that in our setup, the um, keys that we generated, this one right here, that we generated on the private server needs to go on the public side and the one we generated on the public server needs to go on the private side. The way I did it is we need to copy the file from our private server to our public server and the best way of doing that, the fastest most reliable way of doing that is to use an SSH connection to have the private server upload it to the public server directly. So to do that, we need to set up SSH on our VPS side. So I'm going to open up the console for our VPS and log in. 
and then what we need to do is install an SSH server. So apt install open SSH dash server and then dash y and it's going to install it and make sure it's up so we can run service SSH start and then we're ready to go. So, so now we need to switch back over to our private server, our server at home. So on this server, we need to give it the command to upload its, uh, its key to our public server. So we can do that using the SCP. This just means it's a um, secure file copy protocol. So SCP and then the name of the file on this computer to transfer. So etc slash tink slash the name of the network slash hosts slash whatever you call this. So I called it server. And then we need to specify the username and IP address and directory for the public server. So root at and then whatever the IP address of your uh, virtual private server, your public side server is. So mine is 45.32.193.236 and then you want a colon and then the directory we want to upload it to. So we're going to upload it to forward slash TMP just for safekeeping and then we hit enter. It's going to ask us if we want to accept the um, the key. We're going to type yes and then you're going to have to put in your password. This is the password for the public side. So this is going to be that password that you wrote down uh, when you set up your virtual private server. So once you type in your password and you hit enter, it's going to connect to the server and upload it. And it's not going to really look like anything happened, but we got the file copied over to our public side server, our virtual private server. So we can switch back over to our virtual private server. And then we just need to copy that file from the slash TMP directory where we uploaded it into the hosts file for our network. So we're going to do CD slash etc slash tink slash the name of our network so testnet slash hosts so that's going to go into the folder where we need the file so we need the file to be in this folder and then we're going to copy it so cp from the slash tmp directory where it was uploaded slash the name of the file so this would be the name that you set for the private side so i called my private side server and then we need to specify where we want it to put it. So we want it to put it in the directory we're currently in, in this host folder. So we put a space and then a period. And then when we press enter, it's going to copy it to this folder. So that's the key for our private server to connect to the public side server. Now we just need to do the reverse. Now it won't be as easy to do this one because we can't use SCP to copy it straight from our public side to the private side because the private side is not publicly accessible. So what we're going to do is we can set up our web server now and then we can make the key publicly accessible on the web server and then just download it onto the private server. So the web server we're going to be using in this setup is going to double as our reverse proxy server, which I'll explain later, but we're going to be using Nginx, N-G-I-N-X, to run our connections from our private, from our public server over to the private side server via the VPN. So we can install Nginx now. So apt install Nginx-Y and hit enter. And it's going to download all the packages and set them up. And then once that's done, we can do service nginx start. So now our web server, our server on the public side is working. So if you were type in the IP address of your VPS, the public IP address that you got when you set up your VPS and you press enter, you're going to see a page that looks like this. Welcome to Nginx. This is good. This means that the web server is running on the public side. We're just using Nginx as a method to basically relay connections from the public side to the private side. So what we need to do to finish setting up our virtual network is we need to copy the encryption key from the public side to the private side. And we're going to do this 
by, for a very brief amount of time, making the public key publicly accessible. Now, I don't recommend doing this full time, so as soon as you copy it over, delete it from the public directory, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we can do is copy the encryption key for our public side server so that we can put it in the folder that is accessible from the internet. So we're going to do cp for copy, slash etc, slash tink, then the name of the network, slash hosts, slash then the name of your public side. So I name my public side VPS. And then we want to copy it to the publicly accessible folder. So that folder is slash var slash www slash html. So when we hit enter, what that did is it copied our VPS encryption keys over to the public folder. So now we need to switch back over to our private side server. So this is the server that is running on my home network or your private network. And then inside the hosts folder on here, so we're going to cd slash etc slash tink slash the name of the network, so testnet slash hosts. And then in here, we're going to use wget to download the uh, configuration file that we just made public. So you're going to type in the HTTP, then a, then a colon, then two forward slashes, and then the IP address of your VPS. So 45.32.193.236, and then forward slash, then the name of your public side server. So I called mine VPS. So that's going to download the key. And now we have the keys on both sides. So what we want to do is switch back over to the public side server and you want to do cd slash var slash www slash html. So now if we do ls and look at all the files in this directory we see we have that publicly accessible key in here still so we want to get rid of that so just anybody can't download it. So we use rm then dash rf and then vps the name of the file and that's going to make it so that we can't just have that be downloaded by anyone. So now that we've put the uh, private key encryption files on both sides so that both sides have a copy, we can go ahead and start our virtual network connection up and test it out. So to just start it for testing, you want to start on the public side since the public side is what is hosting. It's the main um, point in the network. So it needs to be started first. So we're going to run the command tincd then dash n and then the name of your network and then dash capital D space dash lowercase d 3. Press enter and you should see the word ready at the bottom. That means that it's um, got the network started up and it's waiting for other servers, other computers to connect. So now we can switch over to our private side computer. Now we can connect it the same way. So we can run tincd dash n, the name of the network, dash d, and then dash d3. So what you should have seen is that on both sides, you saw a little bit of scrolling text where it was telling you that it was connecting. Now if you see all that, it means, and you don't see any errors, that means that the two things are connected now. So, since we're just testing, we should be able to, from the private side, ping the public side, but instead of using the public IP address, we're going to use that 10.0.0.1 IP address that is specific to the private network. So I'm going to open up a new tab. Now I should be able to ping the public side and there we go. So we get responses from our ping. Press control C to end a ping by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a service file so that um, whenever each computer turns on they automatically start the network and they automatically connect. So once you've stopped the network by ending those commands we can set up the network to start on boot 
by editing a nets.boot file, which is a built-in file that comes with Tink, and we add our network name to that file. That way, whenever the computers turn on, Tink automatically starts up that command, but it does it in the background so that we don't have to do it. So we're going to do nano slash etc slash tink slash nets dot boot. Now press enter and you should see this line. It says this file contains all names of the networks to be started on system startup. Underneath that line, we're going to add the name of the network. So test net, press control O to save it and press control X to close. Then we're going to do the exact same thing on the public side. So nano slash etc slash tink slash nets dot boot add the network name control O to write control X to close now we need to reboot each of the sides individually so that the network starts up again in the background and we want to do that starting on the server side so when you're turning on your computers uh, specifically the servers so that they can connect to the VPN properly the server the public server side since it is what's hosting our VPN always needs to be the first one on that way the other the pub the private end has something to connect to so we're just going to type the command reboot and our virtual private server the public side is going to reboot and once it reboots it will start up its end of the virtual private server connection now once that's done rebooting we can go over to our private side and run the command reboot and it's going to reboot and it will automatically link up with the public side. So now we can log into either side. So I'm going to log into the public side this time to test it. And once you're logged in, now I should be able to run ifconfig to list all the network interfaces. And we see this TUN0, that network interface we set up. And we see it has the IP address that we told it to have. So now on the public side, I should be able to ping the private side using its assigned IP address. This is the one we made end in two. So if we hit enter, you see, we ping it and we get a response. So that means that these two computers, the public side and the private side, are now linked up as if they were on one network, which allows us to directly interface with the server that is behind our LAN, the one that we couldn't port forward out of, from a public space, from our public gateway. Now, there's still a couple other things we need to do to get this set up and working completely because um, as it stands right now there's still no way for connections coming into our public end to make it to the private end we've just set up the network so the next part that we're going to do is set up what's called a reverse proxy server so a reverse proxy server is a very useful piece of software basically what it does what a proxy server a normal proxy server does is it takes outbound connections from say a network and it makes it look as though those connections are all coming out of a different place. So for inbound connections, connections that are connecting to the public IP of our public server, our VPS, and say a connection comes in on port 80, the web port. So when you type in google.com, it's connecting to port 80. So connections coming in on port 80 of the public side, what our reverse proxy server is going to do is it's going to take that connection and forward it to a different server. So when I type in test.glmdev.tech and I press enter, it's going to connect to the public server IP address. That public server is going to route through as a proxy to our private side server. And then the private side server is going to talk to our clients through our virtual public server. So the clients to them, it just looks like the public server is doing the work, when in actuality, the public server is only a gateway that forwards traffic through to the private side. So one thing that we're going to do before we set up in our reverse proxy server is we're going to make sure that it has something to point to. So I'm just going to set up a basic web server on my private side just for demonstration. But whatever server you're using, if it's a web server or a mail server, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have something that it points to so that... Um, your server can respond. So I'm going to sign in and just set up a basic Apache web server. Um, you can do that by running sudo apt install Apache 2 and it'll get it set up and then we will walk through um, forwarding requests to the private side.
So once you've got whatever server on the private side set up, we need to switch back over to the public side and start configuring our reverse proxy. So a little bit earlier on in the video, we installed our reverse proxy server just so we don't need to test. And that reverse proxy server is actually a web server called Nginx. Now Nginx is a very powerful web server that is built for Linux and it is a very, very advanced platform designed web server. It's designed to be used in advanced use case scenarios as well as simple scenarios. So it can be a little more daunting to configure than something like Apache, but it is a lot more powerful. And one of the specific features that we're going to be taking advantage of is its ability to act as a reverse proxy server to forward requests to our private server. So we installed a pat or we install installed Nginx. So we need to edit the configuration to tell it to forward port 80 to our private side. So we're going to do that by editing the Nginx configuration file. So nano slash etc slash nginx slash nginx dot conf. So your Nginx configuration file will look something like this. And we're actually going to delete most of this. So if you intend to host a website on your private server and you want it to come through the public server, then we need to delete Nginx's default um, configuration for being a web server. So we don't want the public side Nginx server to host our website. We want the private side to host it. So we need to delete the configuration settings that tell the public side server to act like a website. So everything inside this HTTP block here, we need to delete. So I'm basically just going to hold delete until it's all gone. So we want to leave the events bracket before that, all the stuff before that. And we want to leave everything below the HTTP bracket, or the HTTP bracket. We just want to delete the web server configuration settings on the HTTP bracket only. So this, um, this code is going to stop. So there we go. We've gotten rid of Nginx's default uh, web server settings. So now we need to add some configuration that tells it to forward requests for port 80 to our private side. So we need to add a new bracket. That bracket is called stream, S-T-R-E-A-M. Put an opening curly brace, then press enter, and then press the tab key once. And then we need another brace. So this is going to be a server. So in Nginx configuration, you have events, and you have servers, and you have streams. Streams handle more advanced things, so like the reverse proxies. Events are things like this worker connections. It's just if it receives an event, how do we handle it? What do we do? Just event configuration. And then servers are actual, like we're listening on port 80, and this is how we handle it. So we need a server. It's going to listen on port 80, so we're going to press tab twice since we're inside the stream and we're inside the server. And we're going to tell it what port to listen to. So we're going to say listen, and then the port number, 80. Now 80 is the default web server. If you're hosting some other kind of server, like a mail server, then you're going to want to change this to be whatever port that server runs on. So maybe it's um, port 21 for FTP or port 22 for SSH or whatever. Whatever port you want to forward to your private side from your public IP address goes here. Then below that, we're gonna press tab twice and we're gonna use the command proxy underscore pass to tell it to send the requests and we're gonna tell it where to send it. So we want it to send it to 10.0.0.2, the VPN virtual private network IP address of the private side, and then the port number, port 80. So we want to forward requests that come in to the public server on port 80. We're going to send them to the private server's port 80, and they're gonna be able to talk through the public server. So then we need to press tab once and close this curly brace, and then close that curly brace. So curly braces have to come in sets of two. So we open one here, we need to close it here. We open one here, we need to close it here. And so you can just repeat this server block for however many different ports you have. So say you also have a secure connection. So people can connect with HTTPS. You would have another server block that would listen 
on port 443. And so you just add all the ports and have them forward to all of the respective ports on the public side. But for this demonstration, port 80 is enough, so we're gonna press Control O and Enter to save the file, Control X to close it. Then we need to tell Nginx to reread the configuration and update Nginx so that it's actually going to forward requests. So we need to do that by running service Nginx, N-G-I-N-X, reload. Now, if we go to our web browser and type in the public IP of our public server and press enter, we see the Apache 2 web page now. This is what we want. So what happened is, when I press this enter key, it sends a request to our public side server. And then the public side server sees that it's coming in on port 80, Nginx sees that it's coming in on port 80, and in that configuration file, it reads what it's supposed to do with that. So we want to proxy pass, send it to the private side. So it's going to connect to the private side through the VPN, and it's going to send my request for this web page to our private server. The private server is going to say, okay, you want this page, and it's going to send it back to my computer through the public side. So now, this way, we have all of the power of our super powerful home server and expandability of our home server and our ability to privately manage our own data on my private network except it's publicly accessible through our virtual private server. So you can expand this as much as you want so you can add multiple servers to our VPN so it's not just one public side and one private side. Say I have two servers on my network I can have one public side and two private sides. So you would have 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.0.3. And so in that Nginx configuration file, you could tell it, oh, forward this port to 10.0.0.2, but forward this port to 10.0.0.3. That way you have one domain name, one IP address, but it intelligently knows what server to send what request to. And so you can expand the system, it's very powerful, and you can do a lot of things with it. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. I know it was a little, little long and a little bit different than what I normally do, but I hope it helps somebody out who was looking to host their own server and just couldn't get around their ISP barrier. Uh, there were a lot of places where something could have gone wrong, so if you've got any problems or questions, I'll be down in comments below, or if you just want to connect with me, you can do it down there. Or you can connect with me on Twitter, Google+, my email, my blog. Links to all that stuff are down in the description below, as well as my referral link which you can use to sign up for a Vulture account, which is the provider that I used for my VPS in this video. It's great. Um, be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss any of my other videos, uh, coding tutorials and whatnot. And as always, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.